Hello, boys and girls, my name is Altsisti, and this is not another day in Minecraft. We will have a proper look at how to create a waterfall in Minecraft. When you think of a waterfall, what images come to your mind? The Niagara Falls or the Victoria Falls or any other beauty this planet can offer? When looking at this picture, you can see mostly white and not blue falling water. This is a major difference to Minecraft that we want to address. The white color comes from the air which is mixed in with the falling water. Depending on the falling edge and the underground, there might be more or less air within. In Minecraft we will try to mimic this, but the main color will still be water blue. After all, this is Minecraft. Depending on the underground, there is more or less foam at the top. Typically even more turbulences and foam is at the bottom, where the water enters a pool, mixing in with even more air. The first thing to do is setting the backside of your fall. It does not matter if you build it up or use an existing cliff. In the real world, the rock behind the fall is seldom seen, not so in Minecraft. Therefore, we will build up a cliff face using various grey blocks and also some stairs and slabs to give it a bit more variety. Cobble, normal stone and andesite are a great choice for this. It can be complemented with some dead coral blocks. Cliff building would be a tutorial on its own, so let's skip ahead to what you came for. I have completed the wall, it's not big, but uh, high enough for uh, our purpose. And uh, we have a nice pool here at the bottom to collect the uh, water. And here on top, I have uh, created a bit of an uh, uneven lip uh, with the uh, water flow, of course, flowing from, from in from these blocks here. So uh, for uh, purpose of this tutorial, it's just blocks there and also waterlock the uh, top stairs and slabs and uh, as we have uh, slabs and stairs underneath this will create a bit of an uh, uneven uh, lip uh, which looks quite nice but then of course the falling waterfront is very uniform and Next, we will address the uh, foam and sparkles, working our way from the bottom up. We want to have the pool at the bottom at least two blocks deep, as the topmost one will be foam. For that, I use white and light grey glass. The amount of foam is determined by the fall height and the amount of water that comes down. Of course, in Minecraft, this will always be the same amount, but you could imagine that a wider fall brings down more water. The foam forms a triangle away from the water and upwards. The number of blocks you go up should be determined also by the height of the fall. We want to have some free-falling water in the middle section and then some foam at the top. You should not overdo it. So I think uh, building up four layers of glass at the bottom should be the maximum. Next we add some details using glass panes. This will add some additional edges and represent the sprinkles and droplets of water. As I'm using the connected glass texture offered by Optifine, we have less details between glass blocks of the same color. That's why I add the paints. At the end, we will have a look at it with and without connected textures. The foam at the top is not quite the inverse of the one at the bottom. Below, there is foam in the pool, which is created by the falling water. At the top, the spray is only created once the water starts falling, so it follows the water more closely. While the foam at the bottom spreads more horizontally, at the top, 
the vertical dimension is the favorite one. So you tend to place more glass blocks downward than outward away from the water. The story with the glass panes here on top is quite similar. We use them to accentuate and give more visual depth and detail to the whole thing. Finally, there is the middle section that we have left untouched so far. We place some glass blocks which only connect vertically to each other. This will create a kind of spray effect. Many Minecraft builds are quite static and lack luster and life. With these we try to counter it and bring in a bit more of a dynamic appearance to the waterfall. The final touch is dressing up the surrounding of your waterfall like I did here. Like many things in life and Minecraft, you can learn some techniques and get inspiration, but only practice will improve the results beyond a certain point. This is quite a small waterfall. The bigger you go, the more details you can put into it. As promised earlier, let's have a look at a side-by-side -side comparison between the, this waterfall with and without connected glass textures. The difference here are subtle. In the end, you have to decide what you like best. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will put the world download down in the description. If you want to see more, let me know down in the comments. Until sometime soon, goodbye!